everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I am a geologist. I used to work for a petroleum company as a geologist and now I run my own business. Now, in one of my most recent videos, I've done a video about geology and what do geologists do. And that video was one of my most uh, popular ones. I was overwhelmed with the feedback, with the amount of you guys uh, being in geology program. So I thought, what would be better than do a whole series on this channel about geology? So today is an episode one of my series and in today's episode I will tell you about things that I needed to have in school as a geologist, specifically like for geology degree. Oh, and I will be giving a geology specific giveaway, so if you are interested, watch till the end and see how you can enter that giveaway. So first thing first, of course you might have guessed it, what a geologist would be without a geology hammer. And of course I have one. As you can see by the state of this hammer, it hasn't been used for a while, it's been sitting in my garage. But in back in my field, war, uh, field work days, I have used this quite a bit. The reason you might need a geology hammer is because when you're doing a field work and you would like to see a rock outcrop and a fresh rock and like determine what composition that is, but the rock is really weathered, you want to chip away a little bit to see a fresh surface. Another use of this would be if you meet a bear when you're in the forest, at least you have a weapon. No, I'm just kidding, but not really. Um, the other thing too is if you want to take a sample of the rock to take uh, with you to the lab to study or home because you find a cool rock, um, this comes in handy. Now, any hammer would do. You don't have to specifically have a geology hammer. However, it comes in handy because it, well, designed for geologists. It also has a very shock absorbent handle that helps to keep your wrist um, for longer. And of course, with the hammer comes goggles or glasses. I have seen geology students hammer at rocks without eye protection. And one student had a rock chip land in his eye and he had to go to the hospital. So don't be that person. Safety always comes first because it's all fun and games until it happens to you and then it's not fun anymore. So, but hammer is number one on my list. The next thing is a Brunton compass. Now, I don't happen to have one uh, with me because I was lucky enough our school would lend us Brunton compasses during field school. So when we go away, they will give us, assign us a compass for each student and then we'll just give them back to school at the end of the field course. Now, if you don't know what a Brunton compass is, it looks like this. And Brunton compass is specifically used primarily by geologists. And the reason it's useful is because it allows you, not only it allows you to determine direction, like north, south, east, west, right? But it also give, uh, allows you to measure strike and dip. And if you don't know what a strike and dip is, if you imagine a rock surface like this, so say this is a rock, and you're walking along and you want to measure this angle relative to the horizon, um, that Brunton compass allows you to do that. That's called a dip. So you would put a compass on the rock surface like this and in the compass it will read that angle between the horizon and the um, angle of the rock. And it also lets you to measure strike, which is uh, this direction. And it's basically direction uh, of the line formed between the rock surface and the horizon line. Uh, and it also allows you to measure that. And it's a very useful information for geology, geology students, because you are asked to do a lot of maps of rock outcrops and such, and um, you must know that information. Next thing on my list, which is by far the most used by me and still used to this day, is the grain size card. If you don't know what a grain size card, I'll see if I can, if this will focus, there you go. So grain size card is used to measure Green sizes of the sedimentary rocks also determine their roundness and uh, their how sorted, how well sorted they are. Now, not only this is useful for determining the grain size, but it's also useful as a scale. If you are doing any sort of field work, if you even if you're not a geology student, this is gold because it comes with a scale and you know when you're writing a report how important it is to have a scale on your map and this is two in one and it's perfect and it's small and it always comes with me and being a petroleum geologist I primarily primarily worked with sedimentary rocks after uh, during my career and I always always use this. Now with the grain card it's also important to have a hand lens and mine comes in this really super cute pouch and basically that's what that is, is a hand lens that you uh, look at the rock really close to determine the grain size. Now I'll show you, I'll demonstrate how you use it. So in the field, if you find the rock and you say, hmm, I wonder what grain size that is because you're doing description of it, you would put your grain size um, by that rock really close. You would put the lens right against your eye, go really, really close and then sort of determine the grain size. 
of that rock very very handy as well now they are pretty small so I have lost a couple of them in my life but nevertheless uh, next thing is the magnetic pen now it exactly what it sounds like it's a pen with a magnet at the bottom and a little handle here and what it's used for is used for uh, determining if the rock uh, has magnetic properties magnetic elements now if the rock doesn't have magnetic elements like this one the pen doesn't move obviously um, so nothing happens but if you have something magnetic, like a rock with ma I don't have any magnetic rock, but a uh, hammer will do. So you can see that the pen um, gets attracted to it very easily. And that's very useful in a field. And it's uh, useful to have this pen instead of just the magnet. Because when you're dealing with a big rock and you're trying with a small magnet to see if it's attracted to the rock, it's really hard. Especially if the rock is like really weakly magnetic. Um, this pen is a must. It was a must for our field work as well. Next thing is uh, also very handy. Uh, it's a all weather resistant geology notebook. Now, if you are interested in getting one, I am giving one away. Uh, this is where the giveaway comes in. I'm giving one of those away, brand new. And if you are interested in getting this one, uh, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Girl. And I will be posting today a post, a geology related post with a hammer and this notebook. If you see that post, like that post and hashtag it with hashtag rocks, as in R-O-C-K-S, Shailama rocks. And people that are following my Instagram, following this channel and hashtag that post uh, will be entered into a lottery and I will announce a winner in the series number five. So when you see an episode number five, that's where I will announce the winner of for this giveaway. Now this notebook, why? what makes it so special is it's coated with some sort of wax material. So when you're in the field and you're trying to do your notes and you're trying to draw your map and it's raining or snowing, which often does in the mountains, um, your pages don't get ruined, they don't get wet, it, the ink, ink doesn't get smudged, so it's very, very handy. It also has all the geological terms on the back, it has a time scale, like a geological time scale, uh, rock classification charts, map symbols that you often use in a map if you forget them. So it just, it's really handy, very useful thing to have, and I've had like a million of them for my field courses in my, um, degree I had to take four field courses and in each one of them I probably used two or three of those because you do have to take a lot of notes to write a report. Now finally what kind of geologist would I be if I didn't collect any rocks during my field work and I'm gonna show you specifically rocks I collected during my field work. So rock number one is this one. Now um, you might think there's nothing special it's just like a hunk of siltstone but if you look really closely it has a plant imprint uh, here so you see a stem and leaf imprint so this was my very first rock that I personally found that had a fossil in it and I thought it was really cool so I brought it back home back then I was living with my parents my mom was not impressed with this rock but nevertheless I still have it next thing is this guy this guy is super heavy it's an igneous rock with a calcite vein so this is what that white material is is a calcite vein and it, look at this, it has a really cute heart on it. Now, I found this in British Columbia field course. Uh, we were walking down the river pass and I found this. As you can see by this rock, it's really smooth, really weathered down. So uh, it's been under elements for quite some time. But the way it weathered, it created this perfect heart shape. Now this rock is really heavy and I found it on day one of my 10 day field course. So I had to lug this thing around for 10 days in my backpack wasn't pleasant but I did it and now it serves as a doorstop literally a doorstop for my balcony door during summer next thing I have is oil sand uh, being a petroleum geologist we did visit an open mine pit excavation for oil sands and I took some samples and literally what that is is sand saturated with oil that's all it is and that basically lives in this container and finally, mm, not quite a rock, but something I collected during a field course to South Carolina, uh, Charleston. I collected a piece of coral. Now it's a dead coral. I would never take a live coral out of the water. This is a dead coral that was on the beach. 
and a couple shells that were absolutely adorable. They're not quite rocks, but they sort of fall into geo paleogeology <laughs> uh, field, and I thought they were adorable and go very well with my office. Again, so that's kind of it for my uh, geology related items that you must have if you are doing field work. If you are interested in geology series, please ask me questions. I will incorporate them in my future videos. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the answer to your questions. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.